Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes as we take a look at the weather on this Thursday, the 7th of April, 2022. And everything now is being driven by that uh, big giant swirl that you see sitting up in the Great Lakes. Uh, That is a uh, rather strong system. It's actually much uh, stronger in terms of what we're seeing in its reflection aloft. And this is going to be the primary driver uh, of the weather today and uh, for uh, tomorrow and for Saturday and maybe even for the first part of Sunday because uh, you can see the circulation of this covers a whole lot of geography and it is only very slowly creeping uh, to the east. So in the meantime, first things first today is the fact that we have from that low a uh, a cold front that runs down into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, There is what we refer to as the triple point uh, where Uh, the cold front, the warm front, and the occluded front meet. And sometimes when you get near that triple point or underneath that triple point, you could have a a brief burst of uh, heavy weather or severe weather. And that's, I think, is what might be uh, sitting on the minds of the folks at the Storm Prediction Center. This is what they're forecasting here from the overnight updated forecast uh, that was issued at around 2.30 this morning. And uh, you'll notice uh, that the marginal risk touches, uh, just barely touches southernmost New Jersey, right near Cape May, uh, and covers uh, southern Delaware uh, down into the rest of the Delmarva Peninsula and then sort of arcs back around into central North Carolina. There's a slight risk of severe weather being indicated for southeast Virginia and much of eastern North Carolina. We also have a slight risk of severe weather for northern and central Florida. This is something we probably need to pay attention to, if only uh, due to the fact that we saw what happened last weekend with the severe weather in Florida and then had an impact on flights. Has it been any change since yesterday in, in the general forecast? I still think there's a chance that they might nudge that marginal risk a little bit further to the north. Uh, the tornado risk today is a small area of 5% in southeastern Virginia and northeastern North Carolina, and 2% uh, for the two risk areas that were being indicated. Now, as far as the next couple of days are concerned, we're not seeing, we're taking a little bit of a break uh, as we go through Friday and into uh, the start of the weekend. You can see there's no uh, severe weather forecast for Friday, and for Saturday into Sunday, we actually have no thunderstorms forecast anywhere. Uh, in the United States. But taking a look at the day four to date outlook, day four is probability too low, uh, but uh, day five uh, begins, this is Monday into Tuesday, we start to see <clears throat> severe weather risk at SPC's long range again in the southern plains on day five and almost in the same area on day six, maybe just shifted a little bit further to the east. And on day seven, uh, it's in the same general area, but expanded up further to the north and and uh, this is uh, reflecting the fact of a, a slight change in the overall pattern next week with a ridge that's going to be to the east and that's going to keep the weather systems from moving west to east and in this instead uh, deflecting more of the severe weather further to the north uh, as far as the radar is concerned uh, as of uh, 6 uh, 6 a.m we'll give it a quick refresh here Uh, You see some showers and even some heavier downpours running through parts of eastern Pennsylvania, even western Pennsylvania, down into northeast Virginia, and through uh, a good chunk of upstate New York and into northern New England. But for now, the coastal plain seems to be protected. And uh, we're also looking at uh, some overnight showers and thunderstorms uh, that were quite strong when they moved across Georgia. Now they've uh, weakened some. uh, The odd warning popping up here and there, but we're not seeing, we don't have any Uh, watch boxes that are up from the Storm Prediction Center. Again, this radar is as of 6 a.m. Eastern Time, so uh, if you're watching this on a replay, obviously it's dated, and you want to go to your local National Weather Service office forecast page uh, for the latest weather information regarding severe weather, you can do that by going to weather.gov. So let's look at the, uh, we're going to look at the upper air first, and you can see that uh, big closed low in western northwestern Wisconsin starting today as it swings eastward. Uh, it just takes a long time for this system to move through the eastern part of the United States. So one, while it's here, we have to deal with 
uh, rain showers and maybe some thunderstorms later today into tonight moving into the coastal plain. They're already occurring to the west. And uh, the uh, aftermath will be of this very cold, unstable air mass aloft for Friday, Saturday, and even into the part of Sunday. So while we have this upper trough overhead, It'll probably mean for a mix of sun and clouds on Friday and a mix of sun and clouds on Saturday. And we'll throw in the possibility that there could be some sprinkles or showers. There's a, a, a short wave there Saturday evening that swings through the mid-Atlantic states. And then finally, you see the upper trough, the axis of it, off the coast on Sunday. Then we get into a ridge next week. And that uh, might help us to warm up a bit as long as we don't have any kind of backdoor cold front. And there is a system here moving through the northern lakes that might allow a weather front to come down on Tuesday and put a halt as to how far north the warming gets, at least for a day. But after that, uh, the ridge pops right back up. So I think we're going to be okay. we're going to warm up uh, nicely in most places for the first part of next week before we see any uh, other major cold front move on through. So it's a it's a little bit of a better pattern. Uh, we're not uh, we're getting a break from troughs dropping into the eastern part of the United States, and that uh, is a good thing because at least it allows us to have maybe a couple of dry days. So here we go for today. Get this front through with some showers and thunderstorms and some heavier downpours. Uh, we could wind up seeing a half an inch to maybe some places getting as much as an inch of precip uh, later today into tonight. For tomorrow and for Saturday, it's going to be a mix of sun and clouds. Again, the chance that there could be a scattered shower or two or a sprinkle or two. Uh, you can see there's a little low there Saturday morning that forms in northeastern Pennsylvania that brings a steady around a precip to upstate New York and New England. But everybody else looks like it's going to be on the edge of this. Still the chance for some showers uh, Saturday afternoon into Saturday night. Uh, and then Sunday, I think the atmosphere might stabilize enough that it, it'll be a dry day and chilly with temperatures in the 50s. We'll start to edge temperatures higher on Monday. Uh, again, we'll watch to see if a little front comes by here on Tuesday where it just, uh, shuts the warm up uh, for a short time. And then we go back to seeing some warmer conditions Wednesday into Thursday. The GFS seems to be a little overly aggressive with producing some showers um, for the middle part of next week. But for now, we're going to probably lean against that uh, to an extent. Uh, and um, keep our fingers crossed that we could have actually a couple of dry days with warmer temperatures reaching up into the 70s uh, for one or two days for next week. So that's it for Weather in 5 today. Uh, there's no Joe and Joe weather show until next Monday. Okay, just to let you know. So we'll try to get Weather in 5 up every day, though. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy uh, the uh, your Thursday and if uh, you've got to time off, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, too. We'll see you later.